This is Winnie Anderson. Welcome to another episode of The Courageous Entrepreneur. It's great to be with you today. This is the show that provides information and education and inspiration to help you lead a courageous business life. So, just a few announcements as people find the video and before we get in here. This episode is brought to you by Break Free and Breakthrough, 10 Steps to a Courageous Business Life. And I've mentioned that that is the book that I'm working on around all of this information about becoming a courageous entrepreneur. So if you would like to follow the process of creating that book and you would like to play a part in creating that book, then feel free to uh, head to winnieanderson.com slash courage book and just add your link there or click the link there and add your email and I will keep you posted on everything and how that book is progressing. Also what will happen is you'll become part of the readers panel and a book's readers panel are people who are naturally interested in the topic and they're going to help the book get ready to launch and then help launch the book, help promote the book when it is ready. So as a member of the readers panel, you're going to see the outline. You'll be able to give me feedback on, am I covering the things that you would want to learn about? Does this information sound sexy? You know, is it really something compelling? As I start putting the chapters together, you'll get them before anybody else and you'll be able to give me feedback. You'll be able to, to recommend things that you think I need to add, things I need to take out, and you know, you'll really be a part of the book. Then when the book is ready to be launched and promoted, you're going to get as a gift a free PDF of the final version of the book. And I hope that you then support the launch of the book by purchasing it when it launches for 99 cents as the Kindle version and helping me spread the word with all the folks that are out there that you're connected with because this issue of being a courageous entrepreneur, it's a big and a thorny one. And uh, I think that this information will help everybody who struggles with issues related to fears, limiting beliefs, self-doubt, self-sabotage, to break free from those patterns and those emotions and embrace the and create the professional life that they richly want. So that is all about that. Uh, one other thing that I am going to do today, and you'll see me as I'm looking around here, I am going to see if I can do a recording of my desktop at the same time. So, no, apparently I can't. So, all right, we will not do that. And we will just go ahead and end this. Boo. All right, well, that didn't work. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about authenticity, shall we? The reason why I wanted to talk about this today is because I just noticed that the last several weeks, especially the last four weeks, I had at least two people refer to me as an authentic person. I had two people give me testimonials and authenticity was part of that. And I know that over the last couple of years, it seems like that term authentic and its variant authenticity seem to be getting a lot of traction. I seem to be noticing a lot of people talking about it and uh, that that seems to be something like high praise when you can say that somebody is authentic, right? So that got me thinking about it and thinking about what it means to be authentic and how you can be more authentic. So I'm looking at some notes and of course, so I, I'm a wordsmith and I looked up the definition of the word authentic and at Merriam-Webster.com, the definitions for authentic include things like worthy of acceptance or belief. So maybe believableness is part of that authenticity. Then not false or imitation. True to one's own personality, spirit, or character. So it, it seems like that we're using that term authentic to describe people who come across as real to us. That's actually what somebody said to me, that, that I am amazingly real. And 
I was kind of surprised at that, but when I started to think about that even more, which is a great cocktail exercise, by the way, is uh, I started to, to realize that what they were probably talking about was the comfort level that I'm developing in letting the real me in all its pluses and minuses come through in my messaging and my marketing. That has not been an easy thing for me to do. So I wanted to share with you a little bit about this issue of authenticity and give you some tips on how you can start letting more of the real you come out and shine, especially if you're a little on the introverted side or reserved side. You know, I've, I've talked to friends, I've talked to clients who fit into those categories of introverted and, uh, and reserved, and they really are uncomfortable with letting the real them come out. And I think a big part of this has to do with, doesn't so much, come down to a fear, a fear of being judged, a fear of being rejected. So let's, let's look at this stuff a little bit more uh, in depth. So really the, the resistance of putting ourselves out there, being authentically us, is this fear of rejection. And it, you know, so you want to think about, is that an issue for you? Are you feeling fearful? And what exactly are you afraid of? And then ask yourself, as always, right, my six questions to ask yourself when you're feeling resistance, what are you really afraid of, right? You're not afraid of the camera. There's no monster that's going to come jumping out of there. You're not going to get electrocuted when you hit the, the record button or the go live button. The fear is what the other person is thinking about you and saying about you. We all know there are haters out there. You know, in the words of Taylor Swift, haters going to hate. So just, you know, you can't worry about them. You want to stay focused on what your message is and the power of that message to help your core audience. So it does require an awful lot of thinking, introspection, and reflection and an awareness on, am I being authentic? And what does that mean to me? So I think that authenticity has three components, okay? The first is being true to yourself. What the heck does that mean? Well, you have to know yourself in order to be true to yourself. And then you have to be courageous enough to be true to those beliefs, those values, and you know, that can be a thorny process. So it, it can be hard because after being employees for so long, we're not even really sure what it is that we believe anyway because we've been programmed and conditioned for so long with our corporate employers or organizations that to believe what they believe and to fulfill their dreams and, and you know, adhere to their processes and their beliefs, their culture. So this really does require a lot of introspection to uncover your own values, your values, your beliefs, and you know, what's truly important to you. So another issue that is involved with this is transparency, right? So that's, that's number two, really. And transparency comes down to letting people see the real you, right? We're so concerned, and, and especially, again, from our corporate lives, we wear our fancy at-work clothes, we wear our suits, and we make ourselves up, and, and we're concerned about that professional appearance. And especially in corporate life, you never wanted to let people see you make a mistake. You did not want people to perceive you as being weak, as needing help. You were going to be tough all the time, right? So being transparent as part of authenticity involves vulnerability. It really does. It involves the risk of putting yourself out there and, and facing the potential hater, making you, your message completely unique, and getting your message out there. This is really hard especially if you are, as I am, a recovering perfectionist. 
So, you know, we get caught up in the superficial. How does my hair look? You know what? My hair is super ratty today, and I don't care. I just pulled it back and, and uh, slapped on a little makeup, and off I go. So you have to develop a level of comfort with that transparency because we know that people do work with those they know, like, and trust, right? So part of marketing is not just education, it's elevation. It's educating your audience and elevating yourself in their eyes as, yes, as a solid trusted advisor who's competent, who knows their stuff, who delivers on their promises, but who also is somebody nice, somebody who they really want to work with and spend their time with. So this really is sort of a dance I equate it to, and it involves you feeling comfortable enough to reveal a little bit about yourself. I'm a very private person, but I, t I take these baby steps of, of for transparency. One, that's why I jumped into video and why I'm committed to doing this show every day to force myself to, to get out of this fear mode of being judged and therefore being rejected and, and comparison, which I'm talking about in another video soon. So you, you really want to think about how can you add a little personality, right? When I go out in public, one way I, I add a little personality, you know, when I'm at an event or something, is I love vintage pins. So I have a collection of them, and wherever I go, I wear a vintage pin. And one plus for that is it usually attracts comments. So it's a great way for me to have somebody approach me and start talking to me, and then I can get into a conversation with them. I was raised to, with that old children are to be seen and not heard, and that has really stuck with me. That also stuck with me through my corporate life where it was reinforced that you only spoke when you had something truly brilliant to say. So think about what little things can you do to be more transparent. Like I said, you know, being on video is a big one for me. Sharing pieces of yourself. I have a, a, a great friend who, on her website, she's got a picture. She was a competitive swimmer in high school. She put a picture of herself swimming on her website. I thought that was fabulous and very risky for her, right? So those are the kinds of things that you can do. And that move away from stock photography is a great excuse for you then to add some photographs that show the real you and, and give a lot more of your personality. So then... You know, the other piece, so that's number three, right? So back to, for those of you who just joined, three components to authenticity. First is being true to yourself. Next is transparency. And next is to, um, to make value-based, values-based choices. So this requires understanding what your values really are. And your values will, along with your wants and needs, they get seen when there's a conflict. So when you're standing up for something, that's when you know there's a value there. So you want to think about that. What, what are the values? What are the things that I will fight for? And then, am I building a business that is values-based? And then how do I reflect those values in the actions, in the, in the marketing, in everything that I do, in my partnerships and my offerings? So you really want to think that through and then start thinking about your messaging, your visual and verbal messaging to make sure that it's reflecting the values that you have. So let's look at how you can do this, right? So here's some tips on how you can really uncover your own, the real you, and then communicate that through your messaging. So one is create a manifesto or a credo. So a manifesto or, or credos, these are statements. Credo, I think, tr is Latin for I believe. So a manifesto is something similar, and typically it's a statement of what you stand for, right? What you believe. So you can do it in any, any way you want. There, is, there are no manifesto police out there, so no one is going to say, hey, you did it wrong. A, a, a way I like to do it is... You just write belief statements. I believe what about what you do, the problem you solve, the solution you offer, the people you do it for, that sort of thing. So you can just write beliefs. 
Another thing to consider is, you know, you can think of like with the seven deadly sins. So what are the seven deadly sins of, you know, whatever it is that you offer? So a manifesto, you can do it the same way. Just a stream of consciousness, list of beliefs. You can do it in terms of uh, leveraging quotes. I love to do this. I love to find quotes that represent things I believe. And then you can talk about how this represents a belief that you have, right? So um, Manifesto and Credo are really good for getting you in touch with your beliefs, your values. So next is um, to let people in. This is very hard for me. Like I said, I'm a private person. I have an extensive network, but I have only a few people excuse me, who really, really know me and know me very well, and they know my warts and all. But again, people do want to know a little bit about you. You want to raise that know, like, and trust quotient, the KTLQ, as I, uh, uh, K, KLTQ, that, that I call it, know, like, trust quotient, right? Just like you have an IQ, you have an EQ, same thing. Your know, like, trust quotient is uh, the value of how transparent and authentic you are, I think. So this is really important, if, especially if you're running a solo business where you are the brand. People really do need to feel that they know, like, and trust you in order to invest in working with you. Again, this is another reason why I've embraced video and doing a regular show because, <clears throat> excuse me, in my, in my opinion, <clears throat> there is nothing that communicates emotion and, and the real you and personality like a live video will do, or even a recorded one for that matter. But, th and that's really what I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to raise my KLTQ as fast as I possibly could with an extensive audience. So let's see, what else did I wanted to share with you? So one way you can do that is, as I mentioned, using real pictures. You know, there's, there's been this movement away from stock photography to a degree, and I love that, even though it's a big pain, right? But, but people want to see the real you. They want to see, hey, Michael Nelson, hi. They want to see the real you. They want to see what you stand for. They want to get a feel for you to see if they're going to feel good about working with you. So use real pictures whenever you can. Don't worry about them being perfect. Nobody wants perfect. Perfect, it's just, you know, it, it comes across as staged, and that's not what people want to see. Again, they want that transparency. They want that authenticity. So next is, that brings us to taking a stand. You know, the problem with, hey, thanks for that thumbs up. So the problem with trying to please everybody is you really please very few people, if any at all. So as we've seen, like it or not, in what's going on in the, the, the world today, you got to take a stand. People need to know clearly what side you're on so that you can attract and you can repel. Because the best thing to do is to gently repel people, help them recognize that, oh, that's not the best solution for me. She's not the right answer for me. I need to go on my way. That saves me time and saves them time and lets them go. You know, you have to trust that they're going to get served by somebody who's best meant to serve them. So take a stand, have an opinion, and you got to voice it. Be respectful. That's all I ask. Uh, personally, though, I don't talk about politics every now and then, you know. I say something that, that may be uh, related to, to my faith because I'm a faithful person. Um, but you really want to get comfortable with taking a stand and, and letting people understand the real you. So then don't be perfect and don't worry about being perfect. This is very difficult because corporate life rewards perfectionism, right? Go ahead, work 100 hours until you get something right. And, uh, and then live with that fear of what if somebody finds a mistake or perceives it to be not, not fantastic. We know we've seen people be punished for mistakes in corporate life, right? It was awful. I worked in, a, in an environment where it, it was allowed for some people to make mistakes. I was one of the blessed few, thankfully. Uh, and I grew from those mistakes. But there are a lot of scary environments that people come from. And so, so we get conditioned to fear making a mistake. I'm over that, to be honest with you. I made a lot of mistakes in doing this show. Oh, well, somehow I'm going to trust that you'll forgive me. But I'm getting better every time I do one. So, you know, we'll talk later about 
uh, about mistakes and, and dealing with them and managing them in another episode. So being authentic does not mean that you overshare, okay? Well, I'm not asking you to become one of the Kardashians here, but you have to find your level of comfort and be the real you. That's really what it comes down to. It comes down to whether it's baby steps, whether it's a big leap, however you want to do it. So it does mean finding a way to come out of your shell and create more of a genuine, real connection between you and your audience by sharing more of yourself and then doing it in a way that's consistent with your beliefs and values. This, I think, will pleasantly, you know, lead to a pleasant surprise that you are having an easier time creating what you want, which is an audience of interested people who want to know more and who want to work with you. So there's my little tale of authenticity. So it does require courage, and I hope that you reflect on, um, on how you can become more authentic. So your reflection exercise for today is to really stop and think about Am I communicating my real self in much of my marketing? Do the colors reflect me or do I feel, are they the, the I should have this? Does my language reflect me or have I followed the, the police that say you must write this way? So reflect on that and then your action step is to take one action that will help people learn a little bit more about you. Whether you, you do some tweaking on your about page and you share some of your favorite hobbies or you add some pictures of your home office, as messy as that might be as mine is. So your reflection is to think about your overall messaging and is it communicating who you really are and then taking an action that will let people see a little bit more into you. So if you've liked what you heard today and, and watched, I hope you'll share this video with uh, everyone in your connections. Be sure to comment or ask a question below and tag me. I will make sure that I respond to that comment or question and I'll get back to you. If you would like to become part of the readers panel for the book I'm working on, as I mentioned, this episode is brought to you by Break Free and Breakthrough, 10 Steps to a Courageous Business Life. That is the book that I'm working on that encompass, encompasses the, the, the work that I'm doing around courage for entrepreneurs and helping them achieve, come out of hiding and achieve their goals. So you can join that readers panel by going to winnieanderson.com slash courage book just click on the active link, add your email address, your best email address, and I'll get back to you with more information very soon. The readers panel, as I mentioned, people who contribute directly to the creation of a book and then actively support it on the launch. And that includes buying a copy on launch day and, and the book will launch at 99 cents in its Kindle version. So it's not, not like I'm asking you to spend a lot of money. So this has been Winnie Anderson for the Courageous, Business, Courageous Entrepreneur Show. The show airs Monday through Friday here on Facebook at 1130 Eastern. So thanks for, for uh, being with me, and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.